Time for the word on Wall Street, the latest on what's driving the markets and the economy this morning. Joining me right now is the CEO and managing partner of the Bonson Group, David Bonson, is here. And then there's this, curbing China gains. Two government-owned funds in China sold stocks to stem a potential bull market. The Shanghai Composite snapped its winning streak after seeing a boost of, of more than 16.5% in the past eight days. David, let's talk here because when the Communist Party says something, the country follows suit. And a week ago, the CCP said we want a bull market as part of our uh, economic recovery. And like that, uh, millions of Chinese retail investors started opening accounts. Now the CCP says it's gone too far, so they completely reversed course. Your take on what's going on in Shanghai. Yeah, there's a historical precedence for this in 2015, uh, where they try to intervene and boost up equity markets and then have to come peel it back. And, and unfortunately, this is a lesson that governments seem to never really learn. Communist governments, I guess, are more guilty of it. These interventions come at a cost. And so we know that intervening into equities is very distortive when governments are buying as a non-economic actor and then promoting others to do the same. Someone ends up holding the bag because it distorts value. Yeah. By the way, David, you wrote a whole book on Elizabeth Warren and, and, and her economic policy. What are your thoughts on what you heard from Joe Biden yesterday? Yeah, a lot I of people say Elizabeth in, Warren so is going to be the key voice on the economy. Yeah, no, I know. You know a lot about this. You wrote a whole book on it. Yeah. But a lot of people now believe that if Biden were to win, Elizabeth Warren is going to be the key economic voice. I think the bullish case would be that he's going to pretend Warren and Sanders will be the economic voice throughout the campaign. And then after elected, he would switch back to a bit more uh, classical or, or traditional Democratic set of influences. But the reality is we don't know. This shareholder capitalism attack is actually a, a byproduct of this whole social justice movement. Uh, Larry Fink is talking about it. You remember Maria, the business roundtable last year saying share, uh, corporations should no yep. longer exist for benefit of shareholders. That's what he's getting at. It's dangerous. It's economically ignorant. And God, do I miss Milton Friedman. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, this the, the absolute hypocrisy of some of these global money managers who are telling me I want to have this ESG BS and not invest in sin stocks. I don't want to invest in oil companies. I'm not going to invest in tobacco companies because they're sins. Uh, and yet they're perfectly fine managing the money of the CCP. It's so hip hypocritical. It's unbelievable. You've got massive human rights abuses by the CCP, and yet they're perfectly fine investing money in, in China and, and, and for the uh, Chinese Communist Party and yet they're telling us not to invest in oil companies. Uh, uh, really? 